Hey everybody, welcome to Koako and Garden. This is a Planet Coaster project in which, unlike all of the series which I've made so far, I'll be working only on a garden, not on a roller coaster or a theme park or anything even remotely related to that. It's going to be exclusively a Japanese garden. Now, the reason for that is partly because I just really love Japanese gardens and I've been wanting to do this for such a long time already. Also partly because I'm actually in Japan now and I can actually get some inspiration from around here and go on a bit of field trip research. Uh, also partly because we finally have some autumn foliage so I can get some autumn colors of Japanese gardens into this. And finally, I've just always been wanting to try something other than a theme park because I think as a creative game, Planet Coaster allows you to do a lot more than just the one thing that it's more or less built for. So, all that considered, let's get into the time lapse and see how this thing shapes up over time. Alright, now one of the first things that I did is not work on the garden itself, but open up an empty park map because I wanted to make a bit of custom foliage. Because for one, there's not too much foliage in the game anyway, and I just wanted to have a little bit more variety than what we have so far. Even though I started this not too long before the adventure update was announced, and unfortunately, although also fortunately, it looks like we'll be getting bamboo. I'm not entirely sure, but it looks that way, so that's some of the foliage that I was really missing at this point, that unfortunately I couldn't get into the garden itself, but there's a lot of other stuff that I really wanted to get in here, and uh, the most prominent example, I would say, would be the Okari Komi, which is not specifically any type of tree. It can be a lot of types of bushes or trees, but it's this this sort of round-shaped foliage that you see in a lot of Japanese gardens. These bushes and trees that have these big balls of leaves that are... Um, they're sort of shaped like European topiaries, I would say. Or at least they have this, the same sort of idea, but instead of the European ones where they're very geometrical and they have like shapes of perfect circles or squares, things like that. These are very natural. They sort of have much more free-flowing patterns to their clusters and uh, they have a very distinct look. It's sort of hard to describe it, but you'll probably be able to tell what I'm sort of going for um, when you see what's happening on the screen right now or when you see some Japanese gardens with these bushes that sort of flow everywhere in these very wavy patterns. So that's the original idea that I started these trees off with, but sort of in hindsight what I realized is that they're actually a lot more like Japanese pine trees, which uh, to be honest, the Okari Komi and the Japanese pine trees are the two types of foliage that I was really missing in the game to make a Japanese garden. So I'll be getting to both of these and these are really the just the two crucial things to give it that Japanese look. But um, what makes these more look like Japanese pines is that their clusters are much smaller, they have way more, and just overall, oh, <clears throat> just overall, the texture of the bush, I think, matches a Japanese pine much more than it matches a sort of round topiary bush. That said, I'm still not entirely sure how much I like the look, they don't exactly look like the pine trees, I just think it's practically impossible to create anything exactly like that, so I've just decided to use these as a substitute for them. In the end, I misnamed the blueprints at the time because I still thought I would use these as bushes when I made them, but they're gonna be the Japanese pine trees, and I'll get to the bushes at some later stage. In any case, the whole idea behind this bit of custom foliage was just to have a few sort of variations on this tree, that's why I made a few different ones, just so you can actually have that slight natural variation. And just scatter these throughout the garden in the sort of pattern that will hopefully make it look like a convincing Japanese garden. Now next, I wanted to get to the Okari Komi themselves, which is a little bit easier, I think, than the other trees, since most of these are going to just be these round bushes. And the trick is not so much making the bushes themselves, but really when I get into the garden, placing these bushes in the right ways and placing them in a sort of natural, free-flowing pattern. Because there's a lot that I can nerd about when it comes to Japanese gardens, but overall the way that I would, you know, very quickly try to describe them is that they're sort of the opposite of Western gardens in the sense that Western gardens are very unnatural usually, they just involve these very big compositions of all kinds of flowers and trees 
and um, they, they they do show off, you know, if you will, the sort of beauty of nature, but they're not really placed in a very natural sense very often, especially if you look at stuff like French gardens where you've got all of these geometric patterns going on. It's very man-made, whereas on the other hand, Japanese gardens are very natural, not in a sense that they are exactly like nature, they're very much more of a miniature version and they're more like emulating nature than they're recreating it, but they try to go for a more natural flow and so you won't have any of these very artificial looking elements and arrangements, you won't have any very geometric shapes in any of the trees and bushes, everything will be more natural basically. So that's the overall idea, it's kind of like Japan is trying to live with nature where western gardens are beating it into, into submission, sort of. Even though that sounds very negative, I don't want to slam western gardens in any way. But that's the thing that I do like about Japanese gardens is that they're the sort of nature. I don't know if anybody has seen this video yet, I definitely recommend watching it. It's a Planet Bro Coaster Pro Basics video about nature, which explains the idea of arranging trees and bushes in such a way that it looks natural in a theme park, but it's actually very man-made. And I think a very similar concept sort of applies to Japanese gardens as well. They try to look very natural and they emulate natural landscapes, but in the end, they're also, they're also man-made. So finally, I wanted to create this really big pine tree, and that's, I believe, the last thing that I did in terms of foliage. Yep, here we go. Here it goes for the actual shaping up of the lake itself. I think I missed a little bit of the bushes that I was making, but it's not too special. All of these bushes are just some of these typical round ball shaped bushes that you'll typically find in Japanese gardens. And now I wanted to head into shaping the lake of the garden itself. Oh, and this is this is where, where the, the nerd stuff is going to get off the charts. So um, basically, the idea that I'm taking for this garden, because there are different types of Japanese gardens, so the idea that I'm taking for this garden is that I wanted to create a garden that looks like a strolling garden from the Edo period in Japan, which were usually gardens that were meant to be walked through to sort of see all the views that you had. Um, they also had all kinds of different uses that I'll get into in a bit. But they were a type of garden that you don't just see from one perspective. You're supposed to walk through them and you're supposed to do activities in them and see them from different angles. And usually there's also a lake in the middle of these and you're sort of making your way around the lake with all of these typical Japanese picturesque places like little bridges over some small streams. And you know, stuff like that. It's pretty romantic, it's pretty cool. And um, mostly I was inspired by the Daimyo Gardens in Tokyo. And without going too much into history here, uh, basically the way things used to be is that Japan used to be all of these different little places with their own rulers, but there was one ruler in Tokyo, which was the Shogun, which was like the military ruler. Now they had the rule where all of the rulers from all the rest of Tokyo, all of their little places, all these feudal lords, they had to have a home in Tokyo where they live every now and then, which was basically the way for the main ruler of Japan to keep them all hostage and make sure that everybody listens to him. And the cool sort of side effect that this has is that basically Tokyo in those days, when it was called Edo, hence why the period is called the Edo period, uh, Tokyo was, was basically full of all of these estates for these daimyo, which is the feudal lords of uh, all these areas in Japan. And as a result, it was full of all of these sick houses and really cool estates with gardens, and some of these are still left in Tokyo, and nowadays the few remaining daimyo gardens are some of the like main parks in the city and some of the most beautiful gardens. There are also a few newer ones, but this is really the inspiration that I'm getting here. And the cool bit is that I've actually been able to visit all of these and actually take a lot of pictures and film a lot of stuff and get some references from this. I might also turn this into a video. Uh, let me know if you think that's interesting enough because I'd love to get into it a little bit more. But um, yeah, I've been able to visit most of these. Uh, I've been to Rikugien, I've been to Korakuen Garden, I've been to Hamarikyu and Kyushibarikyu Garden, as well as Kyozumi Garden and, of course, Shinjuku Gyoen, which Shinjuku Gyoen, I guess, is a really famous one. It's featured in quite a bit of anime. Um, probably most famously, the Garden of Words by um, Makoto Shinkai, because who else? 
pretty cool movie too, but that, that's a really famous one that you'll see a lot of pictures of. I'll actually picture all of these on the screen so you've got, you get a bit of an idea. But yeah, this is basically where I took my inspiration from, because all of these gardens have a few things in common. They all have this big lake in the middle, these uh, okari komi everywhere, and the overall sort of style that I'll be going through in this build. Now, um, yeah, I don't want to go too much into those gardens specifically. That's definitely something that I'd love to get into if I, you know, actually do a separate video about that. But there are a few elements which you can sort of lift from these things, which I thought were very interesting. And um, at the very least, it gives you a whole other feel for these places. You can look at pictures on the internet of these kinds of places, but I always find it's really hard to actually judge what they look like from pictures. A lot of them are really... <laughs> this is going to sound so way over the top, but you'll never be able to like find every angle from every part of that garden. And that's more or less the thing of these gardens, is they're a sort of moving gallery of paintings. I think there's a lot of academic literature about the similarities between landscape paintings and gardens in East Asia. And the idea behind these gardens that I like so much about them is that as you're sort of walking through them, there's always a bit of a vista, there's always a bit of a vista and there's always like some part where you can look at and it looks kind of like a painting. You've, also, you've always got this sort of landscape and it changes from every angle and it changes from every place that you'll be standing. And that's something that you can't really emulate so well via any images or even some Google Street View. There is some pretty cool Google Street Viewing that you can do in these gardens in Tokyo. And um, if you're into that kind of stuff, I definitely recommend it, but it's still kind of restricted. You can never go onto all of the paths and you can never quite get the same idea. What I actually found very funny is that when going to these gardens, and I went mostly around the uh, seasons that the autumn leaves were actually red, most of the time there were like over half of the Japanese people were all just taking pictures with most of the people also having pretty good cameras and it was really interesting it's like everybody was just going there exclusively to take pictures but yeah uh that's all for those real life gardens i should definitely catch up a little bit on what's happening in planet coaster i've basically uh secured the parameter uh god isn't that like freaking <laughs> yeah that's the wrong lingo to hit you to use here um i've basically put this big wall around the garden because I wanted to fit it in and especially if you look at gardens like Kyushibariku or Rikugien in uh, Ikebukuro you'll find that they're very much in this sort of square parameter which has been squared off by the growth of Tokyo around it and I wanted to do something similar with this garden so I put that wall around there to keep it quite small and this is really small this would actually be I think the smallest garden in Tokyo if it were actually to exist so as much as I'm trying to make this large, it is really, really small. I haven't narrow I haven't measured it exactly, but I think it's no actually I have. I think if I remember correctly, it's 55 tiles by about 60 tiles, which would be a little around uh, a quarter kilometer length uh, in terms of length and um, width as well. So I'm not entirely how sure how much like square kilometers that is, but that's very small. You can walk through the whole thing in not even that many minutes, most likely. In about 10 minutes to 15 minutes, you should have been able to see the whole thing. So, um, yeah, that's definitely one of the ideas from these Japanese gardens, is that by creating this sort of route along which you can scroll, th uh, scroll through the gardens, it is always a bit of a, a loop that you can complete, and then you've seen the whole thing, and you've seen all of the vistas from all the different angles and along the way as you'll be seeing over here you've got some hills a lot of interaction with the water um, where the water sort of represents the sea as a big lake in the middle of the park and they've got some branches running off from that a little bit more like rivers if you will and then the hills sort of represents the mountains everything sort of is a miniature version of real nature in this way and there's even a little bit of forced perspective sometimes in how it works, because these things are definitely meant to look a lot bigger than they actually are, because in reality they really are quite small. So yeah, that's generally the idea behind what I'm doing here. And um, yeah, that's quite interesting, because you can, you can see that a lot of the elements are in fact very much like miniature nature. 
So I'm also making a very small beach over there on the other side of the mountain. The mountain itself, by the way, which I originally modeled after Mount Fuji a little bit. Uh, that might sound kind of stupid, but you actually find that a lot of the, the highest hills in Japanese gardens are a reference to Mount Fuji and have some sort of reference also in their name to Mount Fuji. So it's something that I wanted to try in this garden as well. I'll just be taking a lot either directly or indirectly from real Japanese gardens here. Um, there's also all kinds of symbolism. I haven't gone into the symbolism completely. I mean, I have a little bit, but I always keep forgetting certain stuff. But um, in case there is some, sand and gravel usually represent rivers or flowing water. So especially if you've got some of those rock gardens and you'll have some streams of sand and stuff like that, or even uh, sand waterfalls or gravel waterfalls. These are the sort of miniature elements that actually represent rivers and waterfalls. Uh, whereas the rocks that you'll find in every Japanese garden, and the rock work is truly on point, is, um, is usually representing the mountains in the country. And I, th I think even in a sort of similar way, all of those small shrubs that they carefully keep in all of these shapes, they, they do sort of have the same rolling feeling as seeing large stretches of mountains going over trees. So yeah, they're not exactly a miniature because they're not literally creating miniature mountains or miniature rivers or tiny trees like bonsai, but it gives off the same sort of feelings. It's, it's an emulation. Um, so yeah, that's pretty interesting, I think. Um, and also, less interesting details, I took some inspiration for some of the weirdest things in this garden, so I'm copying some fence designs, if you will. I'm, I wouldn't call them designs, that, that makes them sound way too good. I just took some ideas from fences from the gardens as well, so I was enthusiastically taking pictures of wooden posts and ropes in the garden, and it must have looked really weird, but probably not half as weird as all the Japanese people taking pictures of the maple trees. So, uh, I guess that's what people do in Japanese gardens anyway. So, um, I did take that and used it to actually make the fences over here. So yeah, it might be a boring touch, but a lot of these places have these simple wooden posts with ropes to demarcate the paths, or some stretched bamboo to just make these tiny little arches to keep you on the paths. So that's something that I lifted from that. Also, I wanted to make the ground look pretty ugly and have largely dead grass and mud since that is, to be honest, usually the sort of autumn feel and look of the ground. I have seen some parks where the grass is actually surprisingly green still, near the end of the autumn season, but some of them also have very dead grass quite early on in the season, and it's just something that happens in autumn. You know, grass doesn't grow, so that's something that I also wanted to put in here, just to create a bit more of the autumn look. It's one of the few things which I think makes doing autumn and winter parks a little bit more difficult because all the foliage is usually actually a lot less impressive. Plus, um, a lot of this depends on how good the foliage looks and obviously the foliage in Planet Coaster, even though it's quite good, it doesn't look like those beautiful autumn pictures of Japan and amazing forests in the mountains, so it takes quite a bit of work, I guess, to actually make these look like a nice garden, because, you know, all of the, the beauty from a garden pretty much comes from the foliage, and a lot of it comes down to me. I don't want to blame the game for making it difficult to make this sort of stuff, but you can't really, you can't really rely on amount of detail or on building composition in this sort of case. It really just comes down to how you place the, the foliage. Um, oh, also something that I should probably still mention, I think I mentioned in the beginning of the video I would go into the uses of these gardens a little bit more. It's not even that interesting anyway, but these gardens were apparently used for quite a bit of stuff, be it entertainment or serious stuff. Like, Japanese people like to go out in these things and write poems or whatever it is that they would write in terms of their literature arts, uh, or even use them to go hunting or have any kinds of events, eat together with people or whatever. They're the sort of place where you just want to be. And that's actually quite important 
because sort of in Japanese spirituality, especially if you look at their Shinto religion, which is hot stuff and it only exists in Japan, or pretty much only people seriously follow it in Japan, it's、um, like nature is the most important sort of thing in life. And、um, God, that's a horrible way to describe it. In any case, being part of nature, being in nature, is the, the very point of these gardens in these.、Uh, This kind of spirit. So, being in a garden is supposed to sort of up- uplift your spirit and make you less stressed and overall just be a positive part of life and make you feel good when you're not feeling good about yourself or something like that. It's, it's pretty important anyway. You know, this was back in the days when Japan hadn't invented Nintendo and, you know, they didn't have any Pokemon yet or anything. So, surely they had to have some other things to keep themselves happy. So, um,. Yeah, these gardens were actually quite an important part of life, and they still are. There's still some of the very few spaces where you can actually find a big green space in Tokyo because Tokyo is ridiculously dense. In fact,、um, something that I've been meaning to talk about is、uh, one of the main aspects of these gardens that unfortunately I probably won't be able to feature so much in this one is the idea of shake, which is borrowed scenery. And it means the way in which the garden sort of uses the scenery around it to make the garden itself better. So, there's this really famous modern Japanese garden which uses a cliff that's just outside the garden to sort of be part of the vista inside the garden itself. And、um, this is really cool, a way to make the garden seem a little bit larger than it really is. But unfortunately, since I'm just building this in an empty sandbox, there isn't really anything outside the garden that I'll be able to use as such a thing.、Um, but the, the real ones in Tokyo. Have this interesting dynamic where you'll have the garden in the, in the foreground, and in the background, these ridiculous skyscrapers everywhere. And it's just really cool in terms of how the contrast works. Obviously, it's different from you know, the past years where the background might have been some cool hill or a temple or the sea in the case of Hamariku Gardens, but still, it's quite cool. In any case, that's just about it for this video. So, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this. and... Somehow being able to、uh, probably, possibly keep going through all of my nerdy rants here. And hopefully, I'll see you guys in the next episode, in which I'll be working on some of the bridges and some more hill stuff, and definitely get in a lot more foliage into the garden. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and bye bye.